All right. Good to be here today. Good to be with you alive. We are living here in time. And I got some sage, actually. A little bit of sage right here. I just lit it. They say it wards off the devil and everybody. Anybody like that. You know, Frankenstein, everybody. Mm -hmm. Damn, I lit that hot batch, fam. PG, baby, PTL, you know it. And this stuff, when we didn't have uh, marijuana, we used to hit this shit pretty hard, man. I mean, I... I didn't get high, but damn, I'd be at peace. I remember being at peace for all of the entire uh, seventh grade because of that. Damn, I can't get it to go out. I'm going to pour some of this liquid death on it. That'll help. There we go. Um, Good to be here. Good to be alive. And shout out Sage Laniker. Shout out Sage Laniker. Uh, they had a man in our town when I was young you know I wasn't I was a child and and there were people that were older and some of those were men and and this fellow sage this gentleman was uh he I guess had a if you he would sometimes he would torch some of his own body hair with lighter uh, you know maybe a not a candle usually just a lighter and um and it, had, it it would kind of purify the room. It had the same odor uh, as a uh, burning actual sage. So I remember sometime at a party, it, you know, if people wanted to kind of set the mood, or if people wanted to get kind of um, Native American, they'd torch a little bit of his arm hair, or burn up into his armpit, and really. Just pacify the crowd like that. So praise God, man. Oh, what's up? I'm alive. Isn't it weird? Isn't it weird to just, you wake up and you're just alive again, you know? But you keep going at it. Happy March. That's one thing I can say to you. And we are coming up on springtime. And so it's a, uh, you know, you can feel a COVID starting to disappear. You can pe feel people having freedom and, you know, they're starting to have counties around um, America that the, they're open. No masks. You start to hear it. It's happening. Um, I guess, I don't know what to think, but thinking doesn't usually get me anywhere anyway so maybe i shouldn't do it what i do know though is that uh you should be careful what you put in your body and for an all organic alternative to five hour energy that gets you into the flow state try magic mind magic mind it's an alternative to coffee go to magicmind.co promo code theomagic for 20% off. Let's get into the episode. There we go. This is Matthew Coziol, runs in the family. It's out of my hands and in my blood. Out of my hands and in my blood. It's red in a ledger and I can't pay up. Come on.
And some real strong lyrical component right there. That's Matthew Cosio runs in the family. Can't wash the sin from the hands that made me. Can't outrun what runs in the family. It's, you know, I was, I was, I was actually thinking the other day, which would shock many, but um, I wonder sometimes if we, if like our DNA has the pains of our ancestors in it. You know, just as much as you could have the ability of a, you know, say your great, great grandpappy or grandfather, which is a way more appropriate name. A great, great grandpappy sound. It sounds like somebody who has no enamel in their mouth, you know, tongue only. One of them T.O. bad boys, you know kind of guy who will just inject damn uh, nicotine right into his tongue and just chew on that bitch. But, um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, I wonder, like, our, you know, our DNA can carry, you know, if you have a child, it might have blue eyes or, or green eyes or red eyes or something based on what the parents have. And I was just wondering, well, what if your, you know, what if your great-great-grandfather was, you know, something happened to him? And does that get stored into your DNA almost like a undeveloped film? And sometimes maybe it takes a generation or two for it to, you know, mature enough or dis- dissipate enough and, and it affects you somehow. You know, I wonder, like, say if somebody tickled your great-great-grandmother, but she was in a coma or something. You know, when she died, you know, she was in a crazy accident with a, uh, something simple like a hillside and a wagon wheel. You know, there wasn't a lot of hopper of unique accidents back then. So she was, you know, runaway wagon wheel, knocked her down a hillside. She was in a coma for two years. And people would, t- you know, it's one of her nephew, her little cousins or somebody, an intern or some pervert or somebody would come in and tickle her at, at night. Just kind of getting off on the fact that you could tickle a co- the tickle the comatose without any recourse, without even hearing a giggle, but knowing that that tickle was getting stored into her body, into her frame, into the minutia of her, you know, into the textiles, into the damn, just the fabric of her, whoever she was. And then she died. She died in the coma, which happened all the time. You... I mean, it. when you were in a coma a long time ago, people really thought you were kind of hanging out with God, but your body was still here. So they'd come and people would, you know, hey, give this to God, slip you a little note, you know. Hey, give God, made God a little bit of apple cider. They slip a jug under your limp arm, you know. Hey, tell God I'm trying to do these new hats, you know. They put a cap on you. Then you're jugged up, you're capped up. You got hidden giggles in your body because the night manager's been tickling you. And then, I just wonder if, you know, do you have a grandchild or a great-grandchild that just gets the giggles for no reason, you know? Or, you know, I just wonder what the... I just wonder sometimes, like, if the things I'm feeling or thinking are... Or doing even. Or dreams that maybe a great great grandfather had or or are things that happened to them or experiences or fears or I just wonder sometimes like um you know how much of that how much of the experiences of our ancestors are in locked into the DNA of us. You know? Um, and even groups of people. You know, certain ethnicities and, and you know, how much, 
how much of the travesty of some histories are locked into the people and it takes a while to dissipate and to fall off of their you know fall off of the core of their of their being kind of deal i don't know i'm kind of rambling now but um what's going on i'm happy to be alive um you know i uh what did i do Oh, we have Travis Tritt coming on to the podcast. If you ever got any erection to a ballad um, during the 90s or 2000s, it could have been to a Travis Tritt song at a dance. Dude, I remember, God, about after... I was always the kid at the dance who like got set up with somebody. You know, and so you weren't, it wasn't a, like a little girlfriend. So it was just like, yeah, you know, okay, I'm with Emily or I'm with, you know, Larissa. And you kind of, you were kind of excited, but you knew that they weren't like into you. So, but you kind of hoped secretly. You know, and I remember I'd go to the dance and you do it, you know, you'd, they had the obligatory, like, you had to kind of slow dance with your date. But then after that, you could kind of freewheel it a little. And I remember when some of the slow songs that would come on, man, I would get this. This one girl had like a damn. I want to say it was like a huge belly button. Like, I mean, like a dang, just like a little bowl, like a belly bowl. You know, just inverted and and if you were, I was spry. You know, at a when a, at a dance, man, I would get just 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 wet, just springing bone. I had that thirty fifth rib, baby, just peeking right up out of the middle of my body, baby. You know what I'm saying? My freaking cock was just giraffing around. You know what I'm saying, baby? You know what I'm saying to you? You know, I was spry. I was ready. I was procreational. I was just, you know, God had wound me up and let me go. And I was looking to just spray out. And sometimes I would dance with her. And I remember she she was like, I don't know if she didn't have any feeling in her stomach or anything. But you could like literally put your, just press your damn, just press your, just your fucking junk right up, just right up just smash it and she it was just like wise men say only fools rush in but i can't help falling in. it was just a ballad would go on you know and you were just god what just like the world was thirsty for the sauce you had inside of your wiener that's what it felt like like the world just was just that's what it felt like being young it felt like the entire universe was constantly just sucking at your pee pee but those were the days man that is runs in the family by matthew kazial um What's happening? Um, what's going on? Mm, I need to get some pants. I, I don't like shopping. I don't like... I don't like... I want to make a, a goal this year to shop more from... Um, smaller brands. You know, hometown places. I've been wanting to get a blender for the past month. So I'm going to try to find a locale um, electronics dealership. Go in there, test the models. There'll be a guy in there like, hey, hey, I'm Ron. Oh, yeah, that's smoothies. Yeah, this one smoothies. This one. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, you got a newborn? You just giving him peaches? Oh, that's one. That, that's one. You know, and I'll listen to the bullshit for a bit before I say, look, Ron, I'll take it, all right? Just, you just shut up. Can you do it? Um, what I see, the original uh, Mr. Potato Head. They changed the name to 
just potato or something. Let me see what it says. The uh, the Mr. Potato Head article. Yeah, it said Mr. Potato Head is now just going to be Potato Head. That's the thing. A gender neutral version of the toy. They will be offering a gender neutral version of the toy alongside the traditional. Oh, so they're keeping the Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. Um, and people was uh, some people were upset about. It. I don't think the people were that upset about it, but they said they say on online, which is basically a dangerous place to be if you like to have any peace in your life. Um, but I was thinking like, well, a potato first of all is male. They have male and female characteristics in it. So you got to know they are self pollinators. I have this article say, meaning that every individual potato plant possesses both male and female flowers for reproduction so a potato's already got that dual citizenship you know when it comes to crotch um so yeah why not why not again what my question is what 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 kid still wants to play with a potato you can't get a kid excited by giving him a damn potat anymore so that kid's not even mentally well. Let's be honest. That kid probably has a little bit of hit of uh, give me a T, give me an I, give me an S, give me an M, baby tism. You know it. And I grew up heavy in the autism world. We had a kid at the end of our block and he really, he had just nine different haircuts, man. He just he was kind of just, I mean, from everything from cornrow to damn fade to military to damn, you know, he had that kind of action gospel cut. They thought he could sing. He couldn't sing. He was mentally challenged, you know, and and they put him on the front porch and he would sing uh, ACDC lyrics and, you know, and just kind of cheer at the cars when they went by. And I don't know what happened to him. And I would probably guess death if i had to guess something i don't know if i would guess death but i would draw out of a hat say if there was a hat full of things and it's that had happened to him and everybody had written on a card what happened to him i would draw a card out of there and i bet most of the cards would probably say deceased and bless him bro praise god but um what am i shit i'm i'm all over the place um yeah what kid wants to play with a potato now who cares I don't care if the potato, dude, this, that's not a real Mr. Potato. Mr. Potato is a man. He's a grown man. He got his feet out like that. He got some mustache, glasses. He kind of looks like he probably did a crime and now he's hiding. You know, he looks a little Polish, but maybe also kind of urban, bro. You know, kind of Afro-Polish, maybe if you look at him, basically, you know, if he's that kind of Idaho kind of gold, you know. But now if they want a potato that got you know both you know that's not a real that's not mr potato they got a new thing they got that dual crotch russet they got that dual crotch russet fam and that's chill just say that like i think some of the articling is just to create a stir just say look we got that dcr baby all right we got you know what i'm saying poppy mommy got that mix bag but what kid is still playing with a potato? I can't. You can't. I, I, you can't. I. I don't know one kid you can get off his iPad long enough to even discuss a vegetable. All kids want to know nowadays is: Is Elon Musk their dad? Is Elon Musk my dad? That. And if the answer's no, then they're. But they don't. It, it's. It, that's it. The rest of their lives. They'll spend in therapy wishing he was. That's all. That's it. Is Elon Musk my dad? They don't care what kind of fucking crotch the vegetable has. If we want to do a toy where they where they get to discuss gender, let's do operation. That way, let the kid build whoever they want. This Bobby Sue right here. 
He got the titty and the root. Party on, bro. You know? Invite him to the freaking var mitzvah, dog. Let's do it. But let the kid have a say-so in it, I think. Do, let him let him have operation. You got the mustache. You got that freaking, that wild oyster, bro. Let's do it. That's what I say. Just let the kid have a little bit of say-so in, in the thing. Or just do Transformers. If you're going to make something completely open, an open toy, do Transformers. They're, I mean, they're, they're kind of asking for it, but let the child or the, have a say so in it, I think, or do Teddy Ruxpin's do Teddy Ruxpin. He got the cord on the back. Yeah. You know, Man, I, want, I want waffles, you know, I, I, I thought I'm supposed to be a bear, you know, do Teddy Ruxpin's. He got the thing on the back, you know, nah, won't you be my friend, you know? My, my penis has ovaries. Bah. I, I'm only five. Who, who wants to see my menstrual cycle? Let the animal or the kid have a say-so in it. That's what I think. That's but what also, what do I know? I'm not a child. If, it, if you see me shopping for toys for kids, though, that's an even bigger issue. So, when you see people shopping for toys for children, and they don't have a children with them, and it's December, or it's, and it's not December, we got way bigger issues than, uh, you know, gender, gender, gen, genders, gen him, gen hims, gen hers. Oh, man, I got to tell you this. So I went, and first of all, I want to say this too, man. I want to thank everybody. Uh, you know, we had an episode last time, the Spill the Duntlands episode. It was kind of, got, you know, it, was, it, was, it gets emotional sometimes, and that's just who I am. Um, you know, and uh, I just want to thank people, just nice messages, and just people for just being willing to be a part of this Um just kind of conversations and things that I don't know. I just want to say thanks. You know, thanks for the support. Uh, and thank you for the just, uh, just, just, it's not even thanks. It's just like, look, let's do this. You know, let's try not to be afraid to figure out what, where we are and what's going on. You know, we there's so many like little social rules about being alive and our behaviors and I just want to damn be alive, man. I just want to know as much about whatever this is, this experience. And 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 and, and a lot of you do too. So thank you. Um oh, I got to tell you this. The uh, that's not a commercial either. I um, I went out the other night. So Travis Tritt is a folk country. I mean, it just so many songs you may know or your parents may know. Uh, so you got to peep that with your ears and and your face. It'll be out this week. And um, so anyway, after the show, uh, after we chatted on the episode. Uh, we got to go out. We went out. And Kid Rock, Bob Ritchie, who is an adult man who, you know, I love, I was thinking about what did I love about Kid Rock as a fan, as a listener. And I just remember being, I remember being poor and white and thinking, He just was able to kind of express the, he was this rap, like, I mean, it was, it wasn't country, it was like rap, rockabilly, I want to say rockabilly, I don't know, I don't know enough about music to know the exact genre, and I think it was kind of a new genre, it was just this, it was something I could fit into, you know? 
I mean, I, or something I could, I was just like, oh, here's a guy who just is, it's like a poor white guy who's, who's, who's angry and brash and I could just relate to a lot of that shit, you know, uh, cause the world I grew up in the environment that I sprouted through was a crass, it was crass and it was, but it was passionate and it was, I don't know. Anyway, so, um, live my life in a slow hell. And when he did that slow one with Cheryl Crow, come on, boy. Come on. And she would sing and you'd get kind of erect a little and then he would sing. You'd have to fucking cover it up, you know? God, I mean, that was just damn, that was a lot. But anyway, so we went out to dinner, which was really neat. And, uh. Just to be in the presence of people that are are telling stories you'll never get to hear, and um, and it was just really it was a good time. But anyway, afterwards we went. Uh, we we're out here in the Central East, and Kid Rock has an establishment. Bob is his name. Sorry, has an establishment, uh, and it's a domicile for liquor and music. And um, so we walked over there from the restaurant we're at, and dude. I've walked with some heroes, right? Some unique humans. I've walked with criminals. I walked with a buddy of mine that killed somebody. And and he said it felt pretty good, honestly. I, but um anyway, so we're walking down the street and you start to and it's so it's just drunk people, right? It's like a French Quarter type of vibe when you're walking down on the street and and you see people just start to notice Bob and they start to get, I mean, people are losing it, you know? Some guy tried to spell out bob a bob a bang a bang boogie He just tried to, he started spelling it out like a police officer had said, all right, I need you to recite this. You know, some girl threw her ovary at him. Bob, where are you? Some girls running for him, ran right into a uh, do not park here sign. I see. Some dude crashed his car. He's like, oh, boy, kid, where are you? some fella drank his own blood, put a thing into his side of him, started just sipping on it, dude. Just fucking. I mean, people were losing their minds. And he had like security, but it was just. I mean, people were just, uh, some woman got down and proposed to her husband. Every person, every like space he walked past, something insane would happen. A window shattered, a baby in a stroller, probably four months, got out of the stroller and just started walking, walked off. His parents are sitting there kind of hugging. He's out. I'm out of here. I want to do my own thing. I'm looking for my real dad, Elon Musk. I mean, it was just crazy. Fireworks. A dove pulled a magician out of his hat. He had a hat on. He pulled a magician out. The magician was wondering if he was getting his stimulus payment. The bird flew off. But every moment we went past, like people were, Kid Rock, Kid Rock. A caterpillar admitted that he was just a cat. And it was all just a ruse to meet women with the long, you know, trying to show them that length, show them that body work. Um, so it was just, you know, it was just a fat, it was just, cause look, I've, I've ridden in cars and arrived at places with people with unique, uh, with pomp and circumstance, but to sh- but to walk not a mile, but walk one, uh, one fifteenth of a mile, not in someone's shoes, but near someone's shoes. Um, it was just, it was, I don't know. It was just interesting. You know, you just it just doesn't happen uh, every day. And certainly not to me. Um, I'm going to tell you this, though, that if you are selling stuff online, which is a lot of people these days, you know, is people say it's dangerous out there to have a brook and mortar business, you know, because of the core of it. People sneaking in, sneezing in your window. Somebody cough or exhale on your merchandise. It'll kill a grandmother. That's what they're saying. That's why you need to be in the right business. And you need to put your business online. Online. With ShipStation. That's the right business. 
orders coming in, they need to go out fast. Import orders from any sales channel, ship with any carrier, no matter where you're selling, Amazon, Etsy, or your own website, you know, jerkitoutfunction.com.org, dot tit, whatever. ShipStation funnels all your orders into one simple interface that you can manage from anywhere, even your cell phone. You see them come in, you send them out. You'll get access to amazing discounts with major carriers, including UPS, FedEx, USPS, the SPCA, and uh, I just made a joke on that last one. Easily compare carriers and choose the best solutions every time. With ShipStation, small businesses can now access the same rates reserved for Fortune 500 companies. That's important. Fight back against the big dog. Just use my offer code T-H-E-O to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free of no-hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in T-H-E-O. That's ShipStation.com. Enter offer code THEO. Make ship happen. Look, you know, I spoke a... A decent amount of Spanish over my life, but nothing that's really put me to that next level. Nothing where I've ever made love to a woman or for any even anyone that was formerly a woman. Because that's my thing, man. If I was ever going to be gay, I'd have to at least say, hey, well, you was at least a woman once, right? If you go full dude, bro, that's that might be too much, I think, for me, for me. But I look, if you say, look, you were a chick for a couple of years, right? Then, well, you know, we can, you know, we can enlist, at least split a dessert. Anyway, in case you don't speak uh, Spanish or German, uh, you can learn it from Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. One of my goals for the new year was to learn a new language, and I haven't done it. But Babbel has made the whole process addictively fun and easy with bite-sized lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. They have practical, real-world conversations in mind. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you get an additional three months for free. That's right. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and start babbling that Espanol, that Italiano, that German, something in the butt. Just go to Babbel.com and use promo code T-H-E-O. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Code T-H-E-O. For an extra three months, for free, Babbel, language for life. We also have new merch now available at Theovon.com. Make sure to grab a Get That Hitter hoodie. Um, We got some neat colors. We got some neat stuff coming out this year I'm excited about. Uh, What else? Um, You know... We've had a lot of nice calls from you guys. I wanted to make sure that I keep this going as well. Uh, you know, we we made a a goal this year to help out some single moms and do some nice things. So I want to continue that right now as I sip my liquid death. This is water too. If you like, if you, it's funny because if you look at the can, you think it's a uh, liquor beverage, but that's water, baby. Praise God, man. Um, but we want to continue uh, that goal this year and uh, see if we can holler at somebody right here. Hello. Hey, is Karina there? Yes, this is her. Hey, Karina, my name is Theo. I work on a podcast, um, and I think you might have spoken with my producer, Nick. Um, I haven't. Oh, you didn't? 
No. At least I don't remember. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. Minutes. Look, we've all <laughs> we've all done some things. I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> do you you work as a corrections officer? I do, sir. Oh, nice. And you have two kiddos, right? I sure do. I have two boys. Oh, dang. Boys are freaking dangerous, I think. <laughs> they are. <laughs> um, They're wild. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something's in them. I don't know what's in them. <laughs> me neither. Can you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Look, You're I have no boy. idea. <laughs> Um, well, someone called, uh, then I, I, I'm sorry. I thought they'd maybe spoke to you. Someone called and just, we do a thing. I work on a podcast called this past weekend and we just do a thing where, you know, I was raised by a single mom. And so sometimes we reach out to single moms and just try and do something nice. So we just wanted to reach out and just offer you 500 bucks just to go do something fun with the kiddos whenever you, uh, feel like it. So, um, Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And you don't have to do anything. No. You don't owe us anything. Um, you know, that's it. We just want okay. you to go have, just go do something fun with those freaking deviants. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that's really amazing. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Are they pretty violent? Um, no, they're pretty calm kids. Oh, dang. <laughs> Yeah, they're pretty calm kids. Does it help being a corrections officer? Does that kind of, like, if they see you in uniform, does that add, like, a little bit of extra edge? It, I think so. <laughs> they they tend to listen more. <laughs> I, <bet. laughs> I think I yeah. definitely would. Look, if, if, if my mom said I'm going to put you in timeout and she actually meant it, like, incarcerated, I think I would really tighten up as well. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> Well, Karina, thanks for being a sweet mom. And whoever, I don't even know who it was that, that, that nominated you. I'm sorry, I just don't have that information. But, uh, yeah, they just said that this lady's really awesome and that, um, yeah, and that she would probably like to do something fun. So uh, I'll have a, my producer call you back and just circle up with you. Okay. All right. That sounds great. I thank you so much. I thank you for what you're doing. Oh, no worries. Thank you for, uh, for just even letting us chat on the phone. And I uh, hope you guys have fun. And look, that money can be right. used for bail, too. If those kids are real bad, it can be used for bail. <laughs> I put it towards, uh, towards that. <laughs> okay, you Just guys. Just in case. You guys have a good one. All right, you too, sir. Okay, bye bye. bye. Corina. That's a pretty name. I was thinking if I could have a Spanish name, and I don't know if that's Spanish, but I'm, I'm going to guess it that it is. Corina. What does it mean? Let me look that up. Um, hmm. Maiden means maiden. So, Corina. Is it a Spanish name? The name Corina is a nickname. Um, Caro. Latin word caras, which means beloved or dear. Oh, that's sweet. Dude, that would be wild, bro. If your mom goes off to prison, dude, she would be able to handle you easy. Can you even fathom that? And imagine getting frisked before you go to bed. That would be insane. Spread them, you know. You're like, I, I'm just, uh, I just brushed my teeth. <laughs> she says spread them, but she just means your teeth. She wants to see if you if you brushed them or not. That'd be pretty funny. Uh, the hotline, baby. Praise God, baby. PTL. Stay ready, bro. Praise God. Get in there. Um, the hotline as always is 985-664-9503. Uh, I want to see what we got on, uh, on, on the call. See what happened, man. Let's see what's hitting. Let's get into, um, into some of that. Here we go. Yo, what's up? My name's Damon I'm calling you. I live in Everett, Washington. Dirty Damon up there outside of Everett. And I'm sorry for calling you Damon, but dirt. They, sometimes with Damon, they say dirty Damon. You know? Like Claude, they say clean Claude. But they don't say clean Damon. Onward, brother. Um, 23 years old. Uh, I just had a quick question. So I wanted to get your opinion on something. My girlfriend and I have been trying to 
spice things up in the bedroom, you know? Oh, yeah, brother. Send pics. <laughs> Just joking. Don't write an article about that, some creep. Um, yeah, brother. I feel you, man. Look, when I was 23, baby, doing sex was really God. I mean, I felt like I was just sunbathing on the Lord's front porch, bro. I mean, I just felt like my whole body fucking knew, just was made out of damn just penis meat, man. I was just so, you were just so excited and fired up. God, remember that? I remember somebody would just accidentally bump into me and if if she was cute, I'd damn, you know. I dampen that leg, baby. You feel me onward, baby? Let's hear more, brother. Thank you for calling, man. Praise God. It's been a while. We've been going at it for a while and time to try some new things. So she suggested that we come up with different characters and act like we're cheating on each other. Um, mm. But uh, the problem is, is I'm not very good at this. I mean, I come up with characters and I, I either break character or I just, I don't know. Don't know what to say. And I think it's been it's been a while since I've been in the games. You know, Burton and trying to pick up girls isn't really strong. But uh, her, she's really good at it. I mean, she's coming up with characters' names right off the bat, uh, playing them really well. And I don't know. I just want to be able to give her what she's given me. So if you got any advice for me, uh, I would love it. Uh, thanks for all you do, man. Love the podcast. Gang, gang. See you later, bro. Thank you, man. Um, and thank you for the call and for asking me. Uh, I mean, that's that's first of all, that's exciting. You're involved in an exciting world where you guys are, you know, dressing up and doing um, different, pos you know, positions or something or whatever, you know, costume and all of that. That's that booty Halloween when they say, let's get. You know, why don't you do this or do that? And it's kind of the one time I feel like if you want to do. I wouldn't say if you want to kind of go a little brown face, you might be able to do it in that instance. You know, if it's just you and your girl and you want to really kind of explore some sexual. You know, adventures. You know, you do something, I'm not saying, you know, get racial, but I'm saying, you know, maybe some Nescafe or something on the cheeks, a little bit of a, uh, you know, I think you could go at least a mocha. And, you know, my name is no Dante. My name is, you know, uh, you know, Corinthian or something, you know, you could do like. You could do a role play like that, so it kind of gives you a chance to learn about other cultures. You could read up on some of, you know, the, a certain culture's history, a black history if you wanted to, if you want to go black and, you know, just approach a girl. Maybe you know everything we've been through, that kind of stuff. And at least have like a, you know, have put on some... um poetic justice or something in the background or like a um save the last dance or something or dances with wolves i'm trying to think of like a good kind of racially movie that promotes like um you know racial love you know so that could be something uh you could do Swedish, you know. Swedish is kind of easy. You get a thing of milk, a pail of milk, and then you run over there and y'all kind of fuck a little. But I'm trying to think of something you could do that would be more historical. You could maybe do Native American. You know, and she's like a white woman and you, you know, sneak in or something, sneak in the window. You know, you, you know. You don't attack, or you, you know, you tell, leave her a note or something says, I'm going to attack you. You know, playing ahead, but you don't just, you don't just, you know, not call for a couple days and then swing out of the damn cabinet. You can't be like Indian in the cupboard. You got to be, you know, Indian in the closet who left a note. But 
I would go full throttle because if anything, the one thing it's going to do, this whole thing is just going to create comfortability. So many guys would love for their wife or their, you know, fiance, their French wife or whatever to do a wig, you know, to do a, you know, you know, that crotch wig, that strap on, or probably not that, but they would love for their wife to do something unique, but they's afraid to say it. They're just afraid to say, hey, honey, put on the green wig. Borrow Wanda's fucking wig. So for seven seconds of my life, it could feel, you know, I could feel that that vibe. Like I'm getting up in that UFO, you feel me? Praise God, man. But also you could, um, what am I thinking about? I'm just saying, and once you, if you're starting to create communication, dude, that's fire. Because then you guys are going to be able to do anything. So many of us, we're just afraid to talk and say this or say that. We're afraid of the judgment or what they're going to think or they're going to tell people. But man, to live outside of that fear and to dress up like the damn, you know, like saving private Ryan or whatever. Or to, you know, dress up like damn, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, you and your girl dress up like karate men or something, you know, and just kick each other till you ejaculate. You know, there's just, you got to think big picture, fam. So, but thank you for that call, man. I really appreciate it, man. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Hey, what's up, Theo? You got Seth out of uh, central Pennsylvania here. Uh, just- Seth? Out of central PA, baby. And that's Amish country, man. That's a good place to get that, uh, you know, a strong batch of milk and a little bit of um, uh, peeping timing. Let's hear more. Just finished up watching uh, this past weekend, number 322. Um, I noticed, you know, a good part of that you were going in about... Um, you know, how you're having a hard time, like, really getting intimate with other people and loving other people, you know, on that on that deeper level, man. And I find I... Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, when it comes to connection for me, it's... Oh, man, it's often it's in the shallow end of the pool, it feels like. Especially when it comes in intimacy. I'll be in three feet at the Hampton Inn, dog, you know? Praise God. Maybe let's hear more, Daddy. Face first, baby. You know, I, str- I struggle with that a lot as well, and I feel like a lot of that comes down to, um, you know, like it's it's hard for me to trust myself sometimes, man. And I have, uh, you know, I, I make I make a lot of progress in my life. You know, I'm doing well. You know, I, I provide for myself. I'm doing things that make me happy. But you know, at the end of the day, I just find it very difficult for me to trust myself in a lot of things. And I feel like you, I feel like you, uh, I feel like you can relate to that to some extent. So I guess the question i have for you is uh you know what what do you do in your own life or rather what could you do in your own life to you know build a better relationship with yourself so you can you know trust yourself in whatever situation no matter how bad it gets i got you brother much love gang 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 player gang man thank you for um for taking the time to call man yeah, trust in yourself, man. As you're talking, I'm thinking one one thing I do sometimes that doesn't help me, I set a lot of boundary. You know, I set a lot of boundary, man, like a uh I mean, just like a fence worker. I set, I set a lot of strange rules. Like I'll go for a run. And at the end, I'm like, all right, man. Running every day now. Next 30 days. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. I'll reach into a tree and just grab a raccoon out of it and just choke it out. Did you hear me? Huh, stripes? We're going to do it. So then now I got this rule in my, I got to run for the next 30 days. 
Then I forget that I have that plan. The next day comes, I don't run, but my brain will remind me, man, you didn't run. Hey, hey, hey. It waits till I literally lay down. Hey, you didn't run, did you? Or all day, like, hey, when are you going to run? When are you going to run, huh? Day two, day two. So I'll let myself down, but it's just because I make all these rules. It'll be everything. I'll bite into a tomato. It's like, oh, salad only, 30 days. Salad only. Jesus. The next morning, I wake up and have a waffle, you know? And there's two in a little pack, but I only have one, but still. My brain's like, oh, man, no, so much for salad only, you know? Yeah. Guess I'll just be a glutton and just probably die early, you know? My brain. So anyway, I start to not trust myself because I make, I constantly make these different rules for myself that are impossible to live up to. The number I make of them are in pot there's no that's called unrealism so when i do that then i start to not trust myself because i've made so many little rules that i've broken so but i i i, I never stop making the rules so there's no way i could do it let me hear a little bit more again about what you asked so i can be clear on that deeper level man and i find i uh you know, i struggle with that a lot as well and i feel like a lot of that comes down to um you know like it's it's hard for me to trust myself sometimes man and i have uh you know i, I make i make a lot of progress in my life you know i'm doing well you know I, I provide for myself i'm doing things that make me happy but so another place where i have some issues about trusting myself is um you know when I, like i will find this i'll call like a lot of my friends in recovery and who one thing that's interesting about people in recovery or who have ever been in recovery or spent time in it, once you, once somebody, you, you connect with that person, you connect with them on a level. It's a real level. It's different than the other video game levels you're on with regular humans. This, you straight to Bowser. You know. So it's, uh, there's just a real connection. Um, so I will call a lot of my friends in recovery. And I will just say, hey man, am I, am I okay? Is everything okay? You know, just tell me everything's okay, please. I do that, man. I do it three times a week. Hey man, I'm okay, right? I mean, out of the blue. Hey Alan, what's up, man? Hey Dickie, how are you, dog? Yeah, I'm all Dude, I just, I'm okay, aren't I? So I, it's hard, I never had, I just didn't have, and I'm not complaining, I'm not like upset, you know, I'm, uh, sometimes I get a little perturbed, but when I was young or whatever happened, I don't know, I just, there was never a voice saying everything's okay, everything's gonna be okay, you're okay, you're fine, we're fine, everything's gonna be fine. There was a lot of other commotion where things I didn't know if they were going to be fine. So then still to this day, that's like uh, there's always still this invisible commotion going around all the time. You know, um, so it's hard for me to then trust myself a lot of times because I don't even know that everything's OK. So if I go for two or three days without hearing, man, it's OK. It's like, damn. I start to just not trust myself because like, well, how could I can't make any more decisions right now? I don't even know if everything's OK. So I don't know if that makes any sense, bro, but. It's also hard to trust yourself when you don't even you feel like you don't know yourself. You know, a lot of those spaces make it so hard to make decisions from. Like, man, if I do this, am I going to be OK? While other people are just doing this, doing that, doing coke, juggling, not no concerns, just totally fucking ripping, full sin confidence. Uh, but one of the byproducts is that of that is that you think sometimes thinking a lot is helpful. It's nice. 
Your brain can be really kind of thoughtful at times because you think a lot. So, um, and it gets better as you get a little bit older, Daddy. I promise you that. But the shit can be intense. I think the one cure for it is something I haven't enacted very well in my life, and I do believe that it's meditation. Um, but also, what do I know, bro? You know what I'm saying? I'm just a semi-white fam. Praise God, dog. And R.I.P. Billy Conforto, man. You know, I got a couple of messages about him the other day. And uh, we're going to try to get that bench put up over there near Laplace, Louisiana. In his hometown where he hit that final in bank and, and called it quits and got drafted in the first round by God. Um... You see in the notes anything else I wanted to make sure I get to? Uh, oh, if you know a single mom uh, that could use some support, try not to tell her so we can make it a surprise. Um, you know, I was raised by a single mother. I know that it's tough. I know that money doesn't solve any problems. Uh, but I just think sometimes... Money's just energy. It's just saying, here's some the, some energy that came my way. Let's put it your way. So, just when I think about a mom having just a little extra spending money to do something nice for her kiddos, I imagine that makes moms feel real good. You know, there's something I've never had, seen this because I don't have any children, but you see a parent and they just see, and when their kid is having fun, you see they just, it's almost like they're uh, they're the remote control and they put in the right codes or whatever. And now they're just watching it play out well or something. So yeah, that's really some of the goal. It's not to really think we're neat or anything. It's just to try and do some little you know, what can we do so them little boys have a extra fun day? And they don't have to know it has anything to do with us. They don't know us. Them boys ain't podcasting. They fucking looking for the devil. So, but if you know one, uh, hit, hit the hotline, 985-664-9503. Um, we also want to continue our series of interviews with real hardworking people with interesting occupations. We're currently searching for a Catholic nun. Or Baptist nun even. I went to Last Baptist over there off of uh, Jefferson. A pest control or animal control worker. And an Amish. Or Mennonite. If any of our listeners know someone they think would be perfect for the podcast, fill out a contact form at theovon.com. Or hit up the voicemail hotline. Um, and thank you guys so much for just being a part of our lives, man. What else? Oh, a Seattle woman finds a kilo of cocaine in crochet kit she bought at thrift shop. So Seattle woman finds one kilo of cocaine in a croquet, croquet, crochet, crochet kit at thrift shop. That kilo, damn, dog. At a crochet shop, boy? Call me Kilo and Stitch, fam. Knit me up that gator tail, baby. We making booty movies, son. Come on. That albino giraffe neck, daddy. You feel me? That dustback lizard, fam. That chunchy. That Colombian bam bam. Feliz Navi. Damn. Ba-ba. Call me the power company because I'm <laughs> lit. If you find a kilo of cocaine with some knitting stuff, freaking sew me up a gram, mama. Okay? Knit me that hit. Crochet me that yay, boy. I'm talking about knit that hit. Crochet that yay, you feel me? Sew me up a pile of toot, boo-boo. All right, I'm talking about that Scottish Airlines, that Hollywood breakfast, baby. Damn. I need to go to Goodwill, boy. Who's your dealer? Uh, Goodwill? 
Damn. The woman purchased the kit to crochet animal hats. Animal hats, bitch. Dude, I'll be fucking doing that rhino, you dog. That fucking white nose, baby. You feel me? Let's go. But when the crochet hobbyist opened the kit, she found a suspicious package that was encased in yellow rubber with 100% written on it. The item also gave off an odd odor. Odd odor, baby. That ain't an odd odor. That's that God otter, baby. And that thing's trying to swim up your snout, boo-boo. Come on. Police did not say how the crochet kit and narcotics ended up at the thrift shop. Well, look. Unfortunately, in America, a lot of these workers, they're under tight schedules. And you know what I'm saying, bro. Freaking toot me up a scarf, baby. Wolf me up a damn freaking set of mittens, son. You know, it's just, you know, desperate times require desperate measures, baby. And that's it. People doing toot just to get through a damn Afghan, brother. You know, haven't women been through enough, man? Praise God, bro. Damn. So lucky, man. We, I never found nothing like that. I remember once uh, we got a baby crib for my cousin and they had a um, house arrest bracelet in it. So, but nothing like this. I mean, this is just, damn, just lucky. Just lucky, man. We can't all be winners. You know that. Come on. Uh, what else do we have going on here? Let me see. Let's do one more call that came in, man. Hey, Theo. It's your guy, Flynn, out in San Antonio. What's up, Flynn? Named after Errol Flynn, I'm guessing. And F Errol Flynn played, uh, I think he was Robin Hood. In the 1900s. Let's hear more. I'm just taking a walk with my dog. It's a frigid. 30 degrees. We're getting a little bit of sleet out here. That uh, wannabe snow kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Well, look. The real snow, obviously, is at the damn thrift shop, son. You know what I'm saying, bro? Gang. Onward, brother. Thanks for calling. And uh, I was just hearing you talking about how you didn't want to let us down. You know, you have some some viewers who are in programs or doing rehab or staying sober, trying to stay sober, and you feel like you don't want to let them down. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, we touched on that on the last solo episode about uh, drinking and um, and yeah, like having a feel not a responsibility, but yeah, just feeling hard to share and maybe some responsibility um, onward by uh by kind of coming on with your own with your own failures your own woes and i'm just i just wanted to say man that you don't have to worry about that we're all here for you you're here for us it's a little family we got going on here um i have anxiety i have tourette's i have adhd you know you, you name it any of the acronyms i probably got it you know what i mean but we're all out here just doing the best we can with what we got and uh, I wouldn't fault yourself for for uh, cutting back or uh, slacking on your sobriety as long as you realize that where you want to be and where you're going and how that intersects with with what you got going on now. So just keep pushing towards that that positive future. Keep being you and keep keeping us in the loop. Thanks for everything, man. Have a good one. Thanks, man. Uh yeah, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate uh, the sentiment and the call and um, and the support. Um, yeah, I just want to do my best to just be as. Uh, I just want to do my best to say to kind of say what's going on. You know, I want to be able to work from a place of that's kind of as. not as like real as I can be just like as up to date as I can be and um I don't know but thank you for saying that man that's nice of you to say and uh and I appreciate it um 
yeah, it's a lot of people's, you know, it's just a lot of this stuff, kind of stuff is a journey. You know, um, it's just scary, man. It's so scary when you see the kind of stuff that can happen when people really struggle. And I don't know. I've never thought that I've had problems with alcohol um, ever. Uh, but yeah, it's just that risk of getting too far. Uh, you know, next thing you know, you wolf and toot and you in a damn electric chair or something. Or just a regular chair. Hell, either way, you still just wolfed out on that freaking Jack London, bro, you know? Um, um, and it's just, yeah, you see people that get to a wild, le- you know, it's just, I don't know. I had a friend that, uh, that died the other day of uh, an overdose, and that's scary to hear. You know, it's just scary to hear. Uh, and it's just so final and you wonder like if you stay in the best way you can be what little you know are you more are you sober enough then on where you make an extra call to a friend and you don't save their life or nothing but you just you're one little more little moment that keeps them because I get those moments from people people hit hey man I, you know a buddy will call and just check in. Hey, man, I'll just call and I'll let you know this. Or just those little things that, like, just get your day into a better space, you know, and just those little pieces that make you feel like people care, you know. It's, um, and I think a lot of it is we do a lot of our caring now on social media. So it's not care that people really feel or hear or, it, so it doesn't have that residual effect, I feel like, um, as it used to, kind of. But what do I know? Uh, but what I do know is I appreciate your call, man, I, and, I, and it's nice of you to even think of me and, and to think to call. You know, yeah, I was kind of scared to talk about it, but um, it was scared to be in a... It, but also, I didn't want to be in a place where I... Uh, was kind of not living a lie. I didn't feel like I was living a lie. I just felt like I just wanted to try and be just transparent. Um, What else do we got here, man? Here we take this. What's up, Theo, you little dust bear? <laughs> hey, man, what's up? This is Brady calling. Uh, I just moved to Salt Lake from Colorado a few months ago. And uh, it's the first time I've been living by myself. It's been uh, hard, to say the least. Oh, yeah, living by yourself is tricky, man. Because you'll get pissed somebody left the dishes in the sink, um, but it's always you who did it. So. Um, But I've been really struggling with my sobriety. And... uh, Especially with COVID, you know, it's like it's really hard to find meetings. And um, going to these online meetings isn't the same at all. So I was just looking for some tips, you know, how do I cope with my alcoholism without being able to go to real life meetings, man. I don't know. I'm struggling. I've just been uh, drinking a lot, and I know it's not the right thing to do, but it's easier said than done, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but uh, I love your podcast. Thanks, Brady. Uh, I appreciate it, man. You're not a Debbie Downer, dog. I mean, you just we do what we can, you know? Just like the fella that just called in here, man, you know? Um, we just do what we can. You call somebody else. You check on them. I cannot believe sometimes that there hasn't been more of an outrage from the recovery community 
to reinstate meetings in person. You don't have to agree with me, but it is baffling to me the number of it's baffling to me the connection that is created through in-person meetings um, and how there are, that is not just like a top story almost every day of how we are missing that throughout this pandemic. And I wonder how many more people we've lost to addiction um, and some of the byproducts of that. Uh, and I would bet it rivals I would bet it rivals. I'll tell you this. This is a true statement. I personally know more people that have overdosed or relapsed and lost their life in the past year than I do people that have lost their life from COVID. That's facts. Personally, no. Personally. I have four I have four friends that have lost their life in the past year from drug and alcohol relapsing or use overdosing. Um I know one person who uh had covid when they died. That's just me. Um So uh, I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, man, I didn't mean to d get away from what you're asking for, Brady, or what you're asking about. We just stick together, man. Look, I don't want those Zoom meetings either. They fucking suck. But they also suck if I say that they suck. They also, everything sucks if I say that it sucks. So some of it I have to try and put on me. I got to find a local guy to spend time with, you know. Um, I got to have other people to, to check in with. And I need to check in with others. You know, a lot of times we're like, I'm going to call this person. My brain will be like, or they'll be calling. I'll be like, don't answer it, dude. Just do your own shit. Nah, answer it. You know, answer it. Um, you know, we lost a comedian uh, about a week ago. And I don't want to talk out of school, but he struggled, man. This guy struggled at a level that was, um, man, he struggled. I think he was the... He, I've he was one of the two funniest people I'd ever seen on stage kill a crowd. Were him and Joey Diaz. Kill a crowd. Actually, I'll add in. I'll add in Chris D'Elia and I'll add in Earthquake. Um, kill. Really kill a crowd. And, uh, and his name is Eric Myers and... He, um, and I just say this because I want, I just want his name to be said and I want it to be heard. And, uh, he died in Texas a week ago. He, um, apparently relapsed and, uh, was walking on the freeway or the interstate late at night and was hit by a vehicle, a van, actually. Jesus. Oh. I, I, getting hit by a car sounds way actually, uh, or getting hit by a van to, both sound bad actually car sounds worse I think than van because van like it's all you know one point of kind of um, but uh, you know he was supposed to come on here a couple months ago he was in Memphis five weeks ago maybe he was in Memphis and we were messaging and I, he was going to come here to be a guest on the podcast. And I said, oh, don't come, man. Like, it's just, I felt bad. He was going to have to come, you know, four hours or something. I think he was taking the bus. And I just said, we'll do it later. We'll do it when I'm down near you in Florida where he lived. Um, and it just bones me out. Like, I just... I don't know, maybe if I had been in a space where I was just more like, 
yes, yes, saying yes to things, you know, or just in my, maybe if my spirits have been higher that day, not that I would have saved him or done anything, but we just would have had a time, you know, he just, maybe there would have been one extra moment of somebody saying, yes, I care, you know, welcome, come in, you know, be a part of, uh, so man, he struggled, man. He has so many hilarious stories. I hope to one day get someone in here who knows a lot of the stories of Eric Myers. Um, he had a unique voice. Hollywood missed him. They, they missed him. He was just, I mean, he was from another planet. I would see him in Baton Rouge. We would work together. We worked together down in Florida at Captain Brian's off the hook. And you got to do comedy and they're doing crack and they're fucking oysters and slaughtering uh, octopus or octopi right next to you. You fucking telling a joke and they're fucking telling an octopus his last rites, you know. They're over there electric, electric chair and clams and you trying to rattle off a riddle, you know. And we had to switch each time. And I, we had to, he, one of us would go first, one of us would go second. And I did not want to go second. I did not want to go second. Because that means I had to go after him. And he came down to Baton Rouge once. And I would see him in Texas. Uh, anyway, he was just really talented. Sorry, I'm just kind of rambling and just kind of lamenting at the same time. Um, but I hope you go check out his stuff. He has a special on YouTube. That was, I think, shot at the Laugh Factory or somewhere. Um, but man, he was so good. But man, he battled with the devil. I mean, he just had it inside of him. So, anyway, sorry to be such a downer. Look, I'm sorry to be the downer here. But Brady, how do I stay? I just, the only thing that I know, which hasn't always kept me sober but it has kept me alive is that I try to communicate with others um, and contrary action when you don't feel like doing something do it when you don't do it that's the thing you'll surprise yourself then you'll realize how much you're capable of but I'm not trying to preach at you man I love you bro and keep your head up dog and um Praise God, man, gang, shit. Um, all right. I think we got to the end of this episode pretty decently. We made it anyway. That's important. And we'll close out on this. Uh, thank you guys as always. You know, and if you're struggling, keep your head up. And be good to yourself. Be good to someone else. Um, just don't feel alone. You know. But yeah, the separation that this whole thing has caused. Uh, oh, it's a lot. It's a lot, man. So if you know somebody that struggled, go spend some time with them. Give them that extra call. A little thing to some thinking of you. And, I, you know, make a plan with them. Um. Anyway, y'all be good to yourselves, man. We'll go out on Matthew Kaziol runs in the family it's out of my hands and in my blood it's read in a letter and I can't pay up
hitter right here, baby. Yeah. 